Globalization, according to Manfred Steger, is the unprecedented compression of time and space as a result of not just political, economic, and cultural change, but also of powerful technological innovations. From this statement, it is undeniable how technological advancements play a big role in globalization. It is one of the major drivers of globalization, not just by being a possible source of capital for an economy, but by closing in the physical distance between people through virtual and digital means as well, making it easier to connect with people from around the globe. It fosters in people a growing awareness of deepening connections between the local and the distant, and in that sense gives birth to the dimension of globalization known as technological globalization. Technological globalization, therefore, mainly refers to how technology influences our interconnectedness and the way we communicate and connect with each other. It has not only eased up communication, but also other things like trading and information exchange. And with continuous advancements in technology, these things will just get easier, more convenient, and much more efficient. However, with all these progress and advancements, come the possibility for exploitation. People with enough background on certain technological fields can use these technologies to their advantage. One of the most rampant and dangerous of these are what people call as deep fakes and fake news. These kinds of technological exploitations are dangerous for they serve to deceive people into believing lies by pretending to be credible sources of information. Deep fakes. So what are deep fakes? According to Meredith Summers of Massachusetts Institute of Technology of 2020, a deep fake refers to a special kind of synthetic media where a person in an image or video is swapped with another person's likeness. Another definition is from J.M. Porup of CSO 2019. Define deep fakes as fake videos or audio recordings that look and sound just like the real thing. So in his definition, there is no image, but there is an audio. In this discussion, we will focus on the deep fakes defined by Somers, which is about manipulation of image and videos. The term deep fakes originated at the end of 2017 from a Reddit user named Deep Fakes. He, as well as the other in the Reddit community, are deep fakes shared deep fakes they created. Many videos involve celebrities' faces swap onto the bodies of actresses in pornographic videos, while non-pornographic content included many videos with actor Nicolas Cage swapped into various movies. Other online communities remain, including Reddit communities that do not share pornography, such as r slash sfw deepfakes, short for safe for work deepfakes in which community members share deep fakes depicting celebrities, politicians, and other in non-pornographic scenarios. Other online communities continue to share pornography on platforms that have not banned deep fake pornography. Photo manipulation was developed in 19th century and soon applied to motion pictures. Technology steadily improved during 20th century and more quickly with digital video. Contemporary academic projects have focused on creating more realistic videos and in improving techniques. The Synthesizing Obama program published in 2017 modifies video footage of former President Barack Obama to depict him mouthing the words contained in a separate audio track. The project list as a main research contribution in its photorealistic technique for synthesizing mouth shapes from audio. Researchers have also shown that deep fakes are expanding into other domains such as tampering medical imagery. In this work, it was shown how the attacker can automatically inject or remove cancers in a patient's 3D CT scan. The result was so convincing that it fooled three radiologists and a state-of-the-art lung cancer detection AI. 
audio deep fakes and AI software capable of detecting deep fakes and cloning human voices after 5 seconds of listening time also exist. In January 2018, a desktop publication called Fake App was launched. This app allows users to easily create and share videos with their faces swapped with each other. As of 2019, Fake App has been superseded by open source alternatives such as FaceSwap and command line based DeepfaceLab. Larger companies are also starting to use DeepFakes. The mobile app giant Momo created the application Zao which allows users to superimpose their face on television and movie clips with a single picture. As you can see in the screen, that was the deep fake of me portraying as Johnny Deep using WeFace app. So, is seeing still believing? So now, we will proceed on the techniques how deepfakes were created. The process of first recognizing a comparable small number of facial characteristics in the input and then generating real looking faces as output is accomplished in three subparts an encoder, a latent state, and a decoder. Three steps were taken to create this deep face. First, the region of the image showing this face was extracted from an original movie frame. Second, this image was then used as input to a deep neural network, a technique from the domain of machine learning and artificial intelligence that was used to automatically generate a matching image showing Carrie instead. Number three, this generated face was then inserted into the original reference image to create a deep fake. As the name suggests, the main technological ingredient in creating deepfakes is deep learning, a machine learning technique from artificial intelligence that can be used to train DNNS, reminiscent of neurons in the brain. The autoencoder moves beyond existing material and learns a generative model of a person's face. As mentioned above, every point in the latent space corresponds to an image of a given person. An autoencoder trained on this including a decoder that can generate fake but eerily real looking face image. The trouble, however, is that while the autoencoder can generate different faces from select ones in Latin space, we cannot simply instruct this face image generator to create a smiling bee in the same way that we could instruct an artist to draw one. While all faces are points in the Latin space, we do not actually know which point in this vast space of nearly infinite possibilities will correspond to the image we desire. Solving this problem is a trick that makes deep fakes seem like work of magic. A survey of deep fakes published in May 2020 provides a timeline how the creation and detection of deep fakes have advanced over the last few years. The survey identifies that researchers have been focusing on resolving the following challenges of the fake creation. First, generalization. High quality deep fakes are often achieved by training on hours of footage of the target. This challenge is to minimize the amount of training data required to produce quality image and to enable the execution of trained models on new identities. Second, paired training. Training a supervised model can produce high quality results but requires data pairing. This is the process of finding examples of inputs and the desired outputs for the model to learn from. Data pairing is laborious and impractical when training on 
multiple identities, and facial behaviors. Some solutions include self-supervising training using frames from the same video, the use of unpaired networks such as Tycho GAN, or the manipulation of network embeddings. Third, identity leakage. This is where the identity of a driver, the actor controlling the face in an reenactment, is partially transferred to the generated face. Some solutions proposed include attention mechanisms, few shot learning, disentanglement, boundary conversion, and skip connection. Occlusion when part of the face is obstructed with a hand, hair, glasses, or any other item, then artifacts can occur. A common occlusion is a closed mouth which hides the inside of the mouth and the teeth. Some solutions include image segmentation during training and in painting. Lastly, temporal coherence. In videos containing deepfakes, artifacts such as flickering and jitter can occur because the network has no context of the preceding frames. Some researchers provide this context or use novel temporal coherence process to improve realism, though as the technology improves, the interference are diminishing. Rather, using the AI and machine learning technology for betterment and living condition of the people, few engineers are putting their mind in developing the AI or machine learning enabled fake contents to influence the people in our society. Many deep fakes on the internet feature pornography of people, often female celebrities whose likeness is typically used without their consent. A report published in October 2019 by Dutch cybersecurity startup Deep Trace estimated that 96% of all deep fakes online were pornographic. As of October 2019, most of the deep fake subjects on the internet were British and American actresses. However, around a quarter of the subjects are South Korean, the majority of which are K pop stars. Deep fakes have a gendered angle. The question that is raised is what made the interplay of deep fakes and feminism? Since contemporary feminism, also known as hashtag feminism, takes place online and at times exclusively through social media platforms, it is heavily susceptible to the deep fake. It shouldn't be forgotten that the initial deep fake material that appeared portrayed predominantly fake female celebrity pornographic videos and revenge porn on females. Though it was argued in media that this was created for entertainment and was addressed mainly to the main audience, they were also made available to the wider public and well-known pornographic sites, effectively attacking the identity and moral stance of those targeted. While such content is illegal, and various websites make active efforts to remove it once detected, often such actions came too late or are not efficient. In June 2019, a downloadable Windows and Linux application called Deep Nude was released which used neural networks, specifically generative and desired networks, to remove clothing from image of women. The app had both a paid and unpaid version, the paid version costing 50 US dollars. In June 27, the creators removed the application and refunded costumes. It is said that the purpose was entertainment, but behind that, there is revenge. According to Chesney and Citroen of 2019, both social media and instant messaging application are seen as fertile ground for circulating deepfakes with explosive implication for politics. Yet, in a world where social media plays increasingly pivotal and unexpected roles in politics and culture, deepfakes are viewed as the next vector of disinformation, driven by political and commercial motivations. The public sector side of this coin sees government officials and lawmakers worrying that deepfakes, when introduced into political arenas like state and local elections, will have the ability to sow confusion and discord the democratic process and contribute to general political unrest.
In May 2019, after Nancy Pelosi delivered a speech, a video was released which slowed down her voice and spliced together each time she stumbled, giving the appearance that she was drunk and had dementia. This video was picked up by the Twitter of Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani. While both later took down the video, neither apologized for spreading a doctored video of their political opponent. Here is the real video of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And then he had a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals. That now the doctored video in which she appears to be impaired. And then he had a press conference in the Rose Garden with all this um, short sort of visuals. That, that clip received more than two and a half million views on Facebook. In April 2020, the Virgin Branch of Extinction Rebellion published a deepfake video in Virgin Prime Minister Sophie Wellness on Facebook. The video promoted a possible link between deforestation and COVID-19. It had more than 100,000 views within 24 hours and received many comments. On the Facebook page where the video appeared, many users interpreted the deepfake video as genuine. Some say it is for entertainment. It's not just entertainment, it's for political attack. As these researchers have illuminated, deepfake technology offers new potential ways to explore and entertain in the world of art and popular culture. However, despite the unmistakable propensity to view deepfake technology as wholly sinister and destructive to the supposed boundaries between the real and unreal, artists have done their own appending by building deepfake technology to create and promote art. According to The Verge, Dali appears before visitors when they press the doorbell on the kiosk where he lives and he tells them stories about his life. The realistic Dali has delighted visitors across the board highlighting the incredible potential of deepfake to help the public engage with art, history, culture, and more. So the purpose of deepfakes on art? So first is entertainment, and next is creation and promotion of arts. There are so many applications of deepfakes in many areas, such as social media, culture, in the economy, science, and so on. And while there might be an argument for using a deepfake for good, experts warn that without understanding them, a deepfake can wreak havoc on someone's personal and professional life. Modern technical advances have made it possible to build what is now called deepfakes, a hyper realistic videos using face swaps that leave no evidence of publication and where artificial intelligence are introduced for the betterment of humanity in computer learning. According to Maras and Alexander 2018, deepfakes are the product of artificial intelligence application that merge, combine, replace, and superimpose images and video clips that create fake videos that appear authentic. Deepfake is one of the misuse of artificial intelligence technologies and machine learning technologies that lead to danger and threat to society that affects the emotion and expectation of the people around us, where it executes by using revenge porn, bullying, fake video evidence in court, political sabotage and terrorist propaganda, blackmail, market manipulation and fake news creating the idea of fear compelling people to believe easily. And also, it is a great danger to our society, the political system and industry because it throws 
pressure on journalists trying to filter out lies and misinformation. Likewise, it compromises national security by disseminating disinformation and involvement in elections, and it also hinders citizen trust in the information provided by the authorities. Mitigating deepfakes is an ever-changing challenge that many researchers facing today. However, many suggest methods to combat the problem are introduced. First, anti-deepfake technology that involves deepfake identification, content verification, and deepfake protection, where the algorithm learns to spot these movements by studying the past footage of individuals and a result is a tool that at least 92% accurate at spotting several different types of defects. The second method that mitigates the problem is legislation and regulation, where legal experts believe that it should be addressed in civil or criminal law covering libel, defamation, identity fraud, or impersonating a government official using defects. For example, in Virginia state, anti-revenge porn law has recently made the dissemination of fake representations of photographs and videos a crime, rising the complexity of AI technology thus involves new kinds of regulations and legislative structures. For deepfakes, education and training are essential. There is a general need to raise awareness about the potential abuse 
of AI technologies, whereas deepfakes provide new tools for social engineering to cyber criminals, companies, and organizations which need to be high alert. Critical thinking and digital awareness are recommended as these characteristics are used in classroom to help children spot fake news and connect digitally more respectfully. Thus, that should be therefore be encouraged among the older population which is less technologically knowledgeable. Fake news is actually fabricated stories which are either wholly not grounded in fact or work in enough falsehoods as to be misleading. Fake news exists within a larger ecosystem of misinformation and disinformation. So misinformation is false or inaccurate information that is mistakenly or inadvertently created or spread. The intent is not to deceive. While this information is false information that is deliberately created and spread in order to influence public opinion or obscure the truth. So fake news is not new. In the 13th century BC, Ramesses the Great spread lies and propaganda portraying the Battle of Kadesh as a stunning victory for the Egyptians. But actually, it was a stalemate. Also in the 1st century BC, Octavian ran a campaign of misinformation against his rival Mark Antony, portraying him as a drunk card, womanizer, and a mere puppet of the Egyptian queen Cleopatra VII. And also, Mark Antony killed himself after hearing false rumors that is basically propagated by Cleopatra herself that she committed suicide. What a bad bitch. Such a bad bitch. She should kill herself, Joe. <clears throat> In 1475, a fake news story in Trent claimed that a Jewish community had murdered a two-and-a-half-year-old Christian infant named Simonino. Stories of this kind were known as blood libels because it resulted in all the Jews in the city to be arrested and tortured. Fifteen of them were burned at stake. Another is Catholic Church false explanation of the 1755 Lisbon earthquake. It prompted Voltaire to speak out against religious dominance. In 1793, Mary Antoinette was executed in part because of popular hatred engendered by a canard on which her face had been printed. In the 1800s in the U.S., racist sentiment led to the publication of false stories about african American supposed deficiencies and crimes. So this tabloid from the Sun of 1835 entitled The Great Moon Hoax is the first in a series of six articles announcing the supposed discovery of life on the moon appears in the New York Sun newspaper. In the 1890s, rival newspaper publisher Joseph Pulitzer and William Hearst competed over the audience through sensationalism and reporting rumors as though they were facts, a practice that became known at the time as yellow journalism. Also, in this very disgusting anti-German atrocity propaganda, wherein an elite German corpse factory in which the German battlefield dead were supposedly rendered down for fats used to make nitroglycerin, candles, lubricants, human soap, and boot dubbing. In the 21st century, both the impact of fake news and the use of the term became widespread. New information and stories may be published around the clock by anyone which has resulted in the creation of unwanted, untruthful, and misleading information, often lacking in verification, which may be consumed by anyone with an internet connection. There are differing opinions when it comes to identifying types of false information. 
However, when it comes to evaluating content online, there are various types of false or misleading news we need to be aware of. So in this section, we'll be tackling about the types and application of fake news. So first off is clickbaits. These are stories that are deliberately fabricated to gain more website visitors and increase advertising revenue for websites. Clickbaits are often found on social media. Anyone who is well acquainted with social media has been exposed to near-yellow journalism, which lures users to highly exaggerated posts or thumbnail links, so be careful. So the second is propaganda. Propaganda are stories that are created to deliberately mislead audiences, promote a biased point of view, or particular political cause or agenda. An application of propaganda used in politics is when Russians set up thousands of fake social media accounts to promote pro-Trump news and rumors. They also spread rumors about Hillary Clinton's supposed poor health and legal problems. The third type is satire or parody. Lots of websites and social media accounts publish fake news stories for entertainment and parody. Next is sloppy journalism. Sometimes, Reporters or journalists may publish a story with unreliable information or without checking all the facts which can mislead audiences. Just like Rappler. Joke. Next is misleading headings. Stories that are not completely false can be distorted using misleading or sensationalist headlines. As an example, during U.S. elections, fashion retailer Urban Outfitters published an election day guide, which contained incorrect information, telling voters they need voter registration card, which is not required by any state in the U.S. for voting. And lastly, biased or slanted news. Many people are drawn to news or stories that confirm their own beliefs or biases, and fake news can prey on these biases. Next is purposes of fake news. One of its purpose is to get revenge or teach someone a lesson. And also, it can be used for political reasons. Fake news can be made out of hatred, spite, or jealousy. It could also be made to promote an ideology. Fake news also harms a business competitor and also, it can promote products. And lastly, for its purpose is because it pays. You can earn from making fake news. If you post it online and many people has visited it, easy money. You can earn money from it. Thank you for listening.
emergence from globalization. In this new era of the internet and variety of social media, creation and consumption of news and information in our society is changing. The rapid transformation of traditional print media into online portals has become a new trend. On the one hand, the online social media has democratized the means of news production and dissemination. But on the other hand, it has become a breeding ground for false and fake news. Increasing use of mobile devices and easy Wi-Fi access to 3G and 4G networks, the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter have turned into powerful flat platforms for providing news and entertainment. In the USA and India, the President and Prime Ministers are using Twitter to engage with their voters and supporters. Hence, the direct interaction of politicians and policymakers with the people using social media is having a strong impact on the functioning of the governments around the world. As a consequence, the online journalism and citizen media are also on the rise. New channels of online communication such as Skype, WhatsApp, Messenger, Line, and many others have also led to a rampant increase in the spreading of fake news. Impact of fake news in the society One of the main concerns of fake news stories is that they can polarize society, particularly during political events. Leading up to the gubernatorial election in Jakarta earlier in 2017, more than 1,000 reports about politics and the elections were confirmed as hoaxes. One particular fake news campaign against the main opposition candidate, Agnes Baswedan, read, If Mr. Baswedan loses the election, there will be a Muslim revolution. Historically, the Jakarta election has always been ethnically and religiously diverse. However, this bogus claim, along with similar fake stories, exacerbated the divisions in society and pulled cultures within the nation even further apart. Fake news stories can not only polarize different groups within a nation but also affect international relations. In May 2017, Qatar's state news agency claimed that its Twitter account has been compromised and hackers had published fake comments allegedly made by their Emir critics aspects of U.S. and Arab Gulf foreign policy towards Iran. Although the news agency was quick to label the comment as false, this does not prevent neighboring countries Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt severing diplomatic ties with the country. The biggest factor behind the success of fake news stories is their high level of social engagement. In the lead up to the 2016 U.S. election, the public engagement with fake news through Facebook was higher than through mainstream sources. Social networks connect us with other like-minded people. Our network of friends on Facebook or followers on Twitter generally consists of people who share our values and beliefs. These values may be social, political, or economic, and the information we share through these networks helps to define who we are and what we believe in. This identity is then reinforced the more we read similar news stories shared through our social network, confirming our ideas and biases. And herein lies the underlying force that propagates false information and further polarizes society's partisan. Quite ironically, considering Facebook's sole mission statement has been to connect the world. Fake news often shows obvious signs of its deceptive nature. The key in detecting a fake news is by looking for both linguistic and non-linguistic elements common in fake news. For the first linguistic element, we have the headlines. First, the headlines of fake news are without exception exaggerated, sensational, and eye-catching, or rather click-catching. For example, his friends laugh at him for buying a hard drinker's apartment, but the result of their renovation left everyone speechless. Second, part of the headlines tries to shock, horrify, or scare their readers outright to trick them into clicking. For example, brutal surgical mistake, she went in to give birth but came out with no legs. Third, headlines providing apparently important and allegedly official information are raising awareness of health risks and foods avoid or giving all aim to get the message shared and propagated. For example, changes in pharmacies, don't ex the prescription. Here's what you'll get. For the second linguistic element that we have to look out for, we have the terms. According to Falunet 2017, terms carry the special knowledge possessed by professionals, but not necessarily by outsiders. This is exactly why we have a convincing effect in the use 
in the sci pseudoscientific discourse, where terms are usually vague and undefined or taken from science but used in a different meaning. For example, in the framework of an educational rehabilitation program, 27 Latin American countries are going to introduce the highly acclaimed knowledge-based educational program, which include transcendental meditation. Both students and teachers will participate CM in school time as part of the curriculum. Here, the word transcendental meditation was left undefined and unclear to the readers. For the last linguistic element, we have style and linguistic quality. The language of the text can be news-like, imitating printed and online press. They are, all, they are also characterized by the informal, almost personal style of tabloids. Non-linguistic elements Content The shared material can be classified into three main types, pseudoscientific, tabloid and call for action, and political fake news. Second, URL, links, and traceability. Fake news sites can be detected by having a look at their URL. Completely meaningless headlines are especially suspicious. Example of more sophisticated names include sites promoting content consumption, site evaluating content, and sites whose name resembles that of a real news or tabloid portals. To enhance the deceptive effect, fake news sometimes contain links to sources, but they usually redirect to gossip sites tabloid sites, or even official sites that are remotely related to the topic. Sometimes, fake news portals cross-refer to each other and build a network of references to increase credibility. The following list can be used to help mitigate fake news. Look closely at the URL. Is the source reliable? Be skeptical of headlines. Too detailed sensationalist headlines must be handled critically. Check the photos. If the image are not clearly authentic, such as of missing person, Google image search service can be useful. Check the author. Check the evidence. Look at other reports. And lastly, overcome your prejudice. As discussed earlier, Deep fakes and fake news, especially those that are designed carefully to sway people's opinions and matters of great importance, like in the political arena, for example, can be such destructive forces. They lead to misinformation and misguided decisions to those who don't fact-check what they're reading or seeing. Furthermore, with a sure button one click away, spreading of these wrong information becomes very easy, thus increasing the damage done by them. As responsible members of the interconnected digital global population, it is our duty to try and lessen this damage. The best and easiest way to do this is by simply checking the credibility of our resources. By reading and watching from sites and pages that are trusted to be credible sources of information, we make sure that we only learn and share facts.